Hello guys, welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to a video where we're going to be having a little bit of fun with 3.7 British but at the same time, well, learn a little bit about some tactics that I've developed in War Thunder and believe me when I say no YouTuber in this community has ever talked about, period or, well, at least not to the extent that I'm going to do so, hit the subscribe button, join the Discord well, you can cont contact me directly and, well, we can talk about this stuff. Anyway, um, in the Cromwell, this is a full up tier, a 4.7 match. And, uh, well, my armor basically means nothing right now. So, basically, I'm taking a little bit of a uh, flank towards the northern side of the map. Trying to find any uh, counter flankers so I can uh, take them out and facilitate, well, the win for my team. And now the Cromwell is ve a very, very interesting vehicle in the British line. It gets mobility, which is something that the British really lack, a, a lack on. And, uh, well, even though that it doesn't get armor at an up tier, or even sometimes at its own BR, it can be really, really useful in, uh, well, flanking the enemy in situations like this. Right now I'm trying to push, and I'm going to just see a column of tanks in front of me trying to take them out a little bit by a little bit. The gun on this tank is absolutely amazing, but at the same time, it does not provide any uh, post-penetration well, damage, which is a little bit of a hindrance when it comes to uh, killing tanks. As you're going to see, I'm going to uh, engage in uh, multiple engagements right here, try to kill multiple enemies, and uh, yeah, my gun is not going to be... Uh, well effective enough in killing them unless it's a side shot like this now throughout my career in war thunder i've gotten very attached to planes and well completely neglected tanks tanks for me are ambiguous i don't know how to play them they're very very hard to me to uh, to play and uh, i lack a lot on the uh, mechanical side i'm not uh, the best tanker so i had to come up with a couple of strategies well, not come up, but imply a couple of uh, strategies that I learned from other games in, in War Thunder. And this has been, well, a lot of work to perfect and especially to put it out this way. So, anyway, <laughs> this, uh, well, the strategy and the tactics that I'm trying to talk about are micro and macro strategies. Uh, these strategies are very specific. They do apply for every single uh, game, well, in gaming history, especially if it is a strategic uh, type of game, and, uh, well, it's really useful. So, what are these two mysterious, well, words that I'm talking about, micro and macro? Well, micro gameplay is the ability to use your tank or plane to obtain and push advantages in the game. Simply said, it is everything to do with how effectively you play your vehicle, Having good micro means you're usually very, well, knowledgeable about the uh, vehicles you play and can do very well in them on an individual basis. When coupled with a solid macro, this usually allows you to establish early game leads and even kill numerous opponents. In contrast, a uh, poor micro would imply that you don't know the vehicle you play well enough resulting in mediocre performance when compared to the average player it should be noted however this can occasionally be attributed to poor macroeconomic decisions as well and basically that is micro in a nutshell it's it's basically the skill and well the game knowledge and the tank or plane knowledge that you have in game and how well do you utilize it in in game However, macro gameplay, well, macro gameplay on the other hand, is the process of using micro in conjunction with the information you receive about the game during the game itself, <laughs> including your lineup, uh, how you spawn it, uh, well, how you spawn it in at the start of the game, well, to force win conditions over others by gaining and utilizing your advantages on, on a map-wide scale. While micro is more focused on the individual, macro is concerned with the team. How well you fit into it and how effectively it executes in order to accomplish its objectives. A straightforward way to remember this, basically, because these are a lot of words that, well, very complicated to the, well, 
well, average War Thunder player, let's say it like that. A straightforward way to remember this, it's everything that has to do with the strategy side of War Thunder. This aspect of War Thunder lays a strong focus on your entire game knowledge and awareness, not just mechanically and can make or break even with the greatest mechanical players in terms of how frequently they win or lose games. Take a look at the Orange Doom and how he plays. You'll see what I mean. Now, taking all of that and uh, applying it to this game right here, I just got myself four kills, completely flanked the enemy, but sadly died to, died to lack of ammunition and, well, my poor gun. And, well, basically an ASU F57. But now I'm spawned in a uh, plane, and uh, in a plane, this is the beautiful thing about War Thunder. You can see the, uh, well, the battlefield from above, and you can know exactly what to do. I spotted a plane, I, well, I spotted two planes, uh, the one that I critted, and sadly I turned way to ahead of this, uh, well, the BF-110, I think, uh, in the back of me, thankfully, 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 he doesn't know how to shoot, and while well, baiting a little bit, my team helps me out and basically takes him out. I think it's a BF-110, I, 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 I honestly don't know. But right here, I can see a plethora of uh, well, enemy anti-air. And what this means to me, well, basically, they're the last spawners. Those anti-airs in, the, uh, in their spawn in the back of the map, they're the last guys of, their enemy team, uh, of the enemy team. They don't have any spawn points. They don't have anything. And taking this into account and applying macro strategies into this, by taking those players out, those, are, those players are going to be out indefinitely from the match itself. Plus, at the same time, it's going to uh, secure me a really good position in air so, well, they don't shoot me down. Because, well, I don't know, I don't know how much you've seen, but... Multiple enemy anti-air as well. They can really, really mess with you. Now, uh, the fire quest is really interesting. However, it lacks on guns, but RP3s really make up for it, especially when engaged in open top targets like this. I don't even need to hit uh, the uh, anti-airs themselves. I just need to hit near them. And basically, that's going to be it for me. That's going to be a, a, an insta-kill for me. The other thing about the fire quest is once it loses its energy, well, it's almost a brick in the air. So I need and I must do uh, quick attacks so, well, basically I can survive in the air. Because let's face it, if a plane, well, spawns in right now, I'm not going to be in the uh, state to defend myself. And just like that, four enemies out. And I do mean by just use the, utilizing those strategies, well, and attacking this. And JU87 in front of me that's going to secure me a kill later on. I've just eliminated four enemy players from the game entirely. Those players are not going to do anything. And this JU87 will lose a whole lot of points as soon as it crashes. Because statistically, we know that a JU87 in a ground RB map is definitely going to crash. So that crit right there is going to secure me the kill plus secure me uh, enough spawn points so when I decide to J out of this plane or just uh, get taken out by another plane I'm going to have myself another fighter to defend myself with now I'm just trying to go back to the airfield get uh, my plane repaired and well rearmed trying to uh, well go back to the uh, match but sadly the match is going to end. The enemy team does not have the uh, numbers to take us on and this is a GG. This video right here, this information that is laid down in the video it took a long time in the making. Trust me, guys, it took a really, really long time in the making, especially in explaining this. And I know that most of it, it's boring. But trust me, guys, if you've listened to the what I've said, well, now you definitely know how useful these strategies are in War Thunder and especially how you look at the battle in it from a ma macro point of view and implying your micro tactics to well secure that lead in the game anyway guys that's going to be it for the video i'm looking forward for your feedback on the video thank you so much for watching fly safe have fun and i'll see you guys on the next one